Hi friends, welcome back to our channel Education Hub. Education Hub is an educational channel and we provide all lecture related to computer science. As usual, we are here to give you another lecture. Before starting that, again I have to tell you, please subscribe our channel. Today's lecture is on data structure and algorithm. It's the lecture one. Before starting lecture, I have to tell you, if you like our videos, then don't forget to press the thumb button and share our videos. It will be beneficial for your friends and others person also. So don't forget to like, share and obviously subscribe our channel to get all the lectures. And obviously don't forget to press the bell button because it will alert you about our future lectures. So at the end I have to tell you once more like share and subscribe our channel education hub so today we are starting our first lecture data structure and algorithm data structure and algorithm is important for any type of data and information whatever we are storing to the computer is it what way we have to store what will be better for us to get or retrieve or to modify this data. So it should be in a structural way or a proper way we have to save it. That is data structure. So first of all we have to know what is data structure. Data structure is defined by the logical arrangement of data elements. It combines with the set of operations which we need to access elements. So data structure is a way where we can arrange data elements in a proper set that is will be that is beneficial for our future retrieval manipulation or any other works if it is not stored properly we cannot able to access them properly so for accessing it betterment we need data structure that is structured way we should see our data so what is data structure i think right now it is to some extent understandable to you. Please go through the screen once more. It will be more for you to understand. So here from you can able to get what is data structure. Now after that I have to tell you if you like these videos then don't forget to subscribe our channel. There you can able so it's the data structure already we discussed to some extent right now I'm giving you some times also to read the screen for that purpose so you are reading the screen and in the time also I have to tell you that if you like this type of videos then please like and subscribe our channel as well as I'm welcoming your precious commands, what type of lecture you want, what you want in future, please suggest by give you the you give your precious commands. So I think you are getting enough time to read the screen and it is right now clear to you also. Again I am repeating data structure that is the structural way we have to store so for that purpose we need atomic variable the atomic variable atomic variables can only store 
one value at a time. Atomic variable, why we are telling atomic means, atom means one, you know it, and variable which may store the values. It will store just a one numeric value at a time. So it is uh, in case of the languages of data structure, we are called it as a atomic variable. I am giving you some examples also, int name, int number, float as, that is the, in the as float type variable as, it will store only one value, int number, it will store the only one number, the values stored variable in the atomic way. So after listening the atomic number you can able to get that what is data structure again i am telling some examples also suppose in a library here from first picture you can able to get that it is very unorganized way all the books are stored now after that it is arranged it becomes the data structure that's the assets uh, accessing a particular book require the knowledge of arrangement of the books this arrangement of data is nothing but data structure. The logical arrangement of data element combined with the set of operations we need to access the element is called data structure. Let's go through the screen. It will be better for you to get it, the knowledge. From the first example, you can able to get totally unorganized way so if, uh, now if I want to find out one thing it will create some trouble but if it is totally given then it will give us the logic and some basic basic data structure I have to tell you that is the the structure is uh, linear data structure and non-linear right now I'm discussing about linear there the link list stack and queue is coming and in case of non-linear, the binary trees and others is coming. So at first we will start our discussion before starting data structure, this stack, queue, linked list, etc. or binary trees. We should gather some knowledges of languages, programming languages, which is very essential to study the data structure. And very often when we start our data structure lesson, in case of any exam oriented purpose or anywhere we are getting some trouble because of we don't have the knowledge of that programming languages concept that is also very uh, needed so for that we started from there first of all we should know what these algorithm the algorithm is a computable set of steps to achieve a desired result this is the summary that is algorithm plus data structure gives us the program so at a time we can able to say that algorithm is implies data structure whereas data structure implies algorithm algorithm means what whatever we are doing in our daily basis life also we follow an algorithm everywhere everything is not possible just take an example for a grocery shop from a grocery shop you want to buy the grocery elements not any jewelry similar in a jewelry shop you ask that that is all our algorithms so after algorithm we have to get the knowledge about arrays what is array an array is a data structure it is used to process multiple elements with the same data drive when a number of such elements are known. An array is a composite data structure that means had constructed for basic data types such as array integer. int array is a composite data structure that means it had constructed the same data type more than one value in a single variable so the basic data type 
of array integer and declaring here see here the example is given int a5 that means integer type five values can be stored in a single variable a in the array of a5 now how to take the values int i equal to 0 i less than 5 i plus plus in between that i have to store the a i that means a0 a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 that way the values will be stored in the array so totally up to 4 a0 to a4 that means five values we can able to store in a single variable that is integer a5 that is array so it is a composite data structure because more than one values it will be take and it is constructed from the very basic data but it is static as because if i declare five i may take the value one two or three or four but maximum five is possible not more than that that means whatever the value you can able to use either one either two either three either four or either five the max allocation of memory will be five so obviously it will a uh, wastage of memory because if you want only to store three value then two memory spells will be vacant when you want six value you cannot able to store that that type of problem that will occur here that's why it is known as static uh, data structure so i think you can able to get please go to the screens once then also you it will be very clear to all of you in between that period once again i am telling you if you like our channel education hub so please don't forget to subscribe and always welcome to your precious command it will be more more and more beneficial for us to improve ourselves so please be with us gives your precious commands to you with it will be very much helpful for us. Please go through it. So what is array? I think it is right now clear. Till now we can able to get what is data structure, what is atomic variable, what is array. Now we are telling that it is our topic is data structure till uh, some languages if you want to read there also you will get these topics also. I am making these at first clear then we enter the basic data structure lesson so at first I am telling you array here also we will discuss rest other things also which will be beneficial for you to learn data structure properly see this I'm giving you enough time to read the screen always only because it will be beneficial for you to get more and more understanding. As much as you read yourself, you will get the knowledge. Now, I'm discussing the next thing. And the, uh, what is ADA? We already discussed, but I have to tell you one thing that how to take the values and how to print the values here the both way in the screen you can able to get the for loop is given in between this for loop printf or scanf both type of operation you can able to do before writing ai you can write printf in this way you can able to get the total values So you are able to get the array. Mm. 
now the detail of Addy I have to tell you more that's the thing is address of each element in an array each element of an array has a memory address suppose here I'm telling the very uh, telling the example that is taken void print data int an array a so for a equal to 0 to 5 lesser than 5 j plus plus I take this value j equal to 0 j uh, my no, get lesser than 5 j plus plus I'm giving you a c out instead of if it is c plus plus then c out if it is c then printf that way you can write now the accessing of multiple uh, multiplying an array using pointer this example is given here you can access an array element by using a pointer if array is stored in an integer then the pointer using integer to access the array element void pointer using pointer the printf call and they please see the screen properly void print array using pointer int a int star pi pi equal to a for i equal to 0 to lesser than 5 i plus plus see out value of array star pi pi end line pi plus plus see this the ex another case of multiple uh, manipulating an array using pointer you can able to get from the screen please read it at first then i elaborately discuss it so you can get that if the c out or the print i have to do then what we have to do I have to do the within a for loop I am printing this values one by one here the examples also elaborately given it's a two-dimensional if I have to write the matrix there I need two-dimensional array for that purpose what we have to do these also given here please follow the screen you can able to get that void print using pointer and using integer here also you are getting the output also result is shown in your screen I think I'm giving you enough time to read the screen only because the example by saying is not possible the coding uh, part I can say you the logic but the coding part you have to understand by reading only the way of understanding so for that purpose at the time when the coding is coming I a little bit silent as because at that time moment you can able to read it here see this uh, right now I'm explaining it int a 3 2 that is the row and column is divided right now now the row is 2 and column is 3 sorry column is uh, 2 and row is 3 now you can able to see the screen also for if I equal to 0 I less than 3 I plus plus for 
int equal to j equal to 0, j less than 2, j plus plus, the a i j gives you the equal to a i of j i plus j plus i into j. That way you can able to get the two one dimensional array and its representation. The pointer arrays is also defined here. You can able to define the pointer array similar to an array integer. In, in a pointer array, the array elements store the pointer that points an integer values. You can able to get the values from the screen. A0, A1, A2, A3 and A4 is given here. And the code is also given here. See this. The pointers, a pointer array functions is defining in the right side, whereas where how it is called, it is written in left side. So here, pointer array, the structure is the next part that I have to discuss. The structure are used where you want to process data of multiple data types, but you still want to refer to the data as a single entity. The accessing data is a structure name dot member name. Now the structure student equal to character name 30 and float marks. Now in men student of student 1 char it is declared all the syntaxes in C++ so if you want it to convert it to C or any other languages, you can do it. I'm just uh, showing it here to explain the data structure. What are the structure? Structure is already from the beginning. We know that is it is a uh, user-defined data type. So for that purpose, see here the structure pointer is the example is given here also. The structure student character name 30 float marks. If the struct student star student 1 star student student 2 so student 1 equal to ampersand of student 2 that means the values of student 2 will be stored in the student 1 now when I enter the name marks and others it will be stored to student 1 student 2 this way values so yeah what I already told you that structure is an user defined data type that means here the structure students where the struct student type we have struct student that is the data types right now declared that consists a character array that is a string of 30 and float values or marks so when I using struct that means it will take one string value one float value that is the our data drive. Now next topic is function and uh, recursion. Here for, at first I am declaring the function. Function provides modality of the software. Divide complex tasks into small manageable tasks. Avoid duplication of work. And if I tell you int add then int x int y this two are argument passes through the integer and int z will tell you the int x plus y and it will return the values of addition of x and y so function is provide a modality of software it's divide the complex task into a small manageable task one function is for, for the purpose we can able to store it and after that we can also save it. So one function function modulity of a work if a large number of program we have to do we can uh, separate it in separate modules small modules and that is nothing but where one task will be completed in a function that is the our, uh, here see the concept of a stack. The stack is a memory where the values stored and renewed last in comma first out in the manner using the operation is called push and pop. 
Now see this, at first figure you are telling this is a stack of empty where A I am giving right now. So the values of A will be stored at first. Next push B. That means one by one we are pushing the values. Then B, then push C. So the stack is now consisting three values A, B and C. Now when I pop it, means I want to pop, pop uh, I find out the first element, then it will be come at C at first, then B, then A. That is last in, first out. This is some basic concept of stack. We will discuss elaborately in our another lecture, data structure related lecture. It will be uploaded soon. If you want this type of lectures, various way, then one thing you have to do subscribe our channel one by one like lectures will be uploaded there for every topic related to computer science so education have a such one channel where you can get all the details so please subscribe our topic is right now going on the sequence of execution during a function call when a function is called the current execution is temporarily stopped and control goes to call the function after the call of execution resumes the point at which the execution is stopped to get exact point at which the execution is resumed uh, address of the next instruction is stored in the stack when the function is called completed, the address of the loop stack is taken. Please go through. So the sequence of execution during a function call you can able to get from the screen. That means when the function is called, the execution is temporarily stopped and control goes to the function. Goes to call the function. The function called then after the calling execution resumes the pointer at which the execution is stopped become comes and going on the functions sub uh, functions or the sub programs are implemented using a stack when a function is called the address of the next instruction is pushed into the stack when the function is finished the address of the execution is taken the pop operation goes to there that means one main function or where the program is going on when the he, the function call is there it becomes goes to the sub program or the function it call the total operation of the function then the return values of this function comes and return the values to the function where from the execution is continuing it's again come and it's continued you can able to get that the sequence of execution during the function call the code is given here here the main printf one two then f1 f1 is a function when i got it it goes to f1 f1 printf f1 five f1 six line it calls f2 now stop f1 goes to f2 it totally print f9 10 it will read then return back to f1 print f7 8 then it return back to 3 4 so we will write in this order 1 2 5 6 9 10 7 8 then 3 4 i think right now the sequence is clear to you after this level we read in this lesson more we will learn in our next lecture at the end i have to tell you so if you like this video please don't forget to press the thumb share this video to your friends and your known persons and obviously obviously the main thing don't forget to subscribe our channel education hub education hub is such a channel where you get all education related lectures related to obviously computer science so please subscribe our channel press the bell button